a man of the word, a man who is full of love. Hallelujah. Amen. And he's also been blessed with a wonderful wife. Amen. A woman of God also. Amen. And a woman full of the word of God. Amen. We are blessed in this house. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let us now open up the hearts of our mind Amen. to receive that which God has for us. Amen. Man of God, the Holy is yours. Adonai, we worship you. Son of God, you are so great. Almighty God, hallowed be your name. Your dominion is forevermore, forevermore. We worship you. Son of God, Son of God, you are so great. Almighty God. Jesus, I want to take this time to glorify your mighty name. Amen. Thank you for this precious time. Thank you for your Amen. Amen. The woman has spoken to me said, give me the card. I will come to that place and see. What's it okay? And he came. God bless you, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And you are highly welcome in this place. This is your house. This is a family church. And we want you to be with us permanently. Amen. In the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to encourage each and every one of us that is here right now. That this place is your place. Hallelujah. Amen. The house of God is a general house. It's not it's nobody's house. It's not my house. It's Jesus' house. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I want to let you know this morning the power of testimony. That's not my message. But I see the time has gone so far. You know, when there is a testimony, the Bible says, and they overcome him with the blood of the Lamb and the what? The words of their testimony. Hallelujah. Because your testimony is your embankment. It is supposed to be the banking of your faith. Yes. Whenever there is a testimony, whenever God performs something in your life, that particular performance of God in your life, that is what you should take when there is a storm in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. If you want to know more, I will tell you about the resume of David. Hallelujah. Amen. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. Let me see very carefully. This man was very calculative in his words. He was trying to testify of the power of God in his life. There was a battle that is ongoing right now. The people, children of Israel, they were all down because there was this mighty huge Goliath coming out every day, pouring insults upon the God of the Israelites. And there was no one to raise his head above this particular Goliath. This morning, I don't know what Goliath is fighting you. <laughs> and I went out after him and smote him. I killed that slide that came and took a, a lamb from my foe as I'm guiding my father's flock. That is one very powerful testimony. That means I don't care how terrible the power that is coming to take away that which is mine. I will pursue. Amen. Amen. Then he pursued the lamb, took the lamb out, and he didn't stop there. And I went after him and killed him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his, be by his beard and killed him. And, and killed him. Hallelujah. Amen. The servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistines, be as one of them, seeing he had defied the armies of the living God. Amen. What kind of testimony can supersede this testimony? Mm -hmm. That is the power of your testimony. You know what happened to David? As he gave this testimony, he was empowering himself. He was speaking zeal. He was speaking enthusiasm. In other words, to challenge the storm. There was a violent storm testing the children of Israel. For several days, this gigantic giant had been coming out, throwing insults upon the people of Israel. He didn't stop there. He was throwing insults upon the God of Israel. He has stepped over the waters. He so far stepped in blood. And David, a small boy, now let me tell you something. When you are giving your yes. and if you are staggering in the front, you will take it from the front and put it in the back. <laughs> this is the type of God that we serve. This is not 
my message, but I just want to give you seed upon your testimonies. That's the empowerment that we should hold on. That is the stick that we should lean upon. That is the foundation that we should rest upon. If I get sick now, what should I do? I remember what God delivered me from in time past. In fact, I have, a, I, have a, I have a habit. Whenever I am sick, the type of medication that I take and bring healing to me, I will never forget that medication. As soon as somebody complain about that sick, I will give him that description. <laughs> Now, this particular husband 
was a member of the school of the prophets. He was a righteous man. So, what am I trying to say this morning? It is not your, your Christianity that will take you off the problem. There will always be a problem. In fact, you are not called to walk upon carpet. The Bible says, He has given you power to tread upon what? What is a serpent? Snakes. Serpent. But if, when you know what God has done for you in the past, this woman is a woman of faith. And she understands, she should have gone to the sorcerer and asked for help. How? Because you know, when you are out from some places, when somebody owes you a debt, when you are pestered in that person too much, he will take your name to the voodoo priest and they will kill your ass. How many of us have got Let's not go right now. We are Africans. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Look, they did it to me. You will forget about that particular money. Your heart will totally just die down. Because why? They have performed some spiritual enchantment and vision and calling upon the name of sacrifices and libation and make sure that you don't longer think. If you don't be careful, if you are in America, you will not be able to achieve the money to pay transport to go back. Because when you go back, it is when you go back that you'll be able to come ask for your money. It is when you are able to fly again, that is when you are better to fly. That is when you come and ask me. Yes. They will stand up and they will insult you. They will pop insult upon you. I'm talking out of experience. That is the reason why you have to have a banking a testimony in your life of the power of God, what he has done. When that happens in your life, then when there is a problem, you know where to go. Now this woman decided to go to Elisha, the man of God, and told Elisha about his problem. My husband was a student in your school. He had passed away. As if that is not enough, now the debt, he left the debt, and now the people are coming to call the debt, and they want me to pay. If I don't pay, they will take my two, two, two sons, who should be consoling me. What a terrible situation. I know everybody here has a problem. I will not tell you. Can somebody just read that for me quickly? In my father's house, there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would not have told you. Hallelujah. Amen. And he explained how the mansion and how it is very important to connect to him so that when you pass through this particular journey, you will go into that mansion. It does not only mean the mansion. When you walk in salvation, when you walk in, in righteousness in this world, you are walk, you are in the mansion. You are in the you are walking in dreadfulness. You will walk in perfect peace. You will walk in perfect protection in this particular troubled world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But you have to walk it out. It is not never free. Hallelujah. Amen. And Elijah, the prophet, told the woman, he said, What do you want me to do for you in such a condition? What do you want me? What do you expect from me? The woman knew what the, uh, the man of God is capable of doing. And so he went there and asked him. And he said, what? He threw the question back, the ball back to him. What do you want me to do? The woman said, if there is any way you can help me. And the man of God turned to the principles of God. And he said, what do you have? Hallelujah. Amen. Before God will bless you, you must have a container. Yes. Some of us, our containers are filled with something different, trash. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't allow that to happen. When your container is filled by something contrary to the things of God, then the presence of God will no longer have a space in there. Yes. So make room. When the provision is coming, you've been praying for so long, it is terrible. Then the problem will minimize. Amen. It will be downside. Hallelujah. Amen. Because why? Your God is bigger than the problem. Amen. Let me tell you something. If David had, 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 had occupied David, in fact, when he told him to go and attack the Goliath, Saul gave him his armor. And he said, I am not, I am not, the word, there is a special word there, that I am not used to this kind of dressing to go to battle. I'm not used to it. Hallelujah. Amen. Instead, he rather went and approached the Goliath with just a sling that is used to attack. Imagine chasing a lion that runs at 3,000 miles per second. You chase that, and in that speed, you release a sling and strike that animal and take the, 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 the young goat from his mouth. What about a stagnant Goliath that does not move? Yeah. <laughs> Very difficult to miss. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Very difficult to miss because why? The guy is so 
effective is so calculated in his way of doing things. He knows what he's doing. He knows the type of God that he's having. Hallelujah. So the man of God told uh, Elijah, Elijah told the uh, woman that do you have anything? I have only a jar of oil. That is another principle that the woman has fulfilled. The principle here is it's in 1 Corinthians 1 27. God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. God. He uses the foolish things. If you look at the Bible from the beginning to the end, God has never used somebody who is in high places for his work. You know why? Because no flesh can glory in his presence. Nobody. I'm a technical work from wheelchair. That is not your business. You spoke it happened. It was not your power. The power is behind. Is the one that is behind your words. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So that should not lead you to pride. By the way, pride went before you fall. Mm. <laughs> when you see somebody getting proud, just be careful now. Begin to pray for that person. He's about to fall down. Amen. Flat on the ground. Very flat. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the word of God teaches about servitude. Praise the living God. Amen. And so the man of God looked at the woman and he said, you know what? Go into the room with your son, your children, and go out and borrow some, you know, because they are not enough. Some of us, we have to borrow containers. When God, when God is ready, really ready to bless some of us, there will come a time when what you have cannot, can, when the blessing of God, can, you cannot contain. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, hey, I will open the windows of heaven. And what a blessing that you cannot contain. Amen. That is his word. Mm-hmm. When you obey my word, when you obey my commandment, I will open the windows of heaven and pour down blessing that you cannot contain. That is going to be your portion this 2012. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. There can be no dark in your homes because you have sacrificed to his presence. Amen. You don't know what you are doing. Leaving your homes very early in the morning. For some people, what you are doing is a very big thing. I am just coming from work. I have to sleep. The flesh is not allowed there. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Hallelujah. And so the man of God told them, give her, give his command. Now that's a foolish thing. I have only one jar of oil. How can I know? Small jar. After I have eaten that, just like widow of Seraphas. After you have eaten this small portion of bread, then me and my son will die. The man of God says, prepare it for me. Prepare that food that you are going to sacrifice. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Woman borrowed jars and jars and jars and she began to pour the oil. She should have just said, what kind of useless thing is this? This is not real. This is too good to believe. Bring this jar, I have only a small jar, and I begin to pour oil and it will fill this jar, fill that one, that fill that. But that is the work of the God that you are serving. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's the God of miracle. He can do something the unthinkable. Nothing is impossible with God. Hallelujah. And so the woman filled her jars with oil, and the, oil, the jars were all filled out. She ran out of container. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you serve God sincerely and faithfully, that is going to be your portion. Amen. Hallelujah. If you serve God sincerely and faithfully, your jars will never run dry. Amen. Your jars will never run dry. Your home will never know no lack. Because why? You are walking in obedience to the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's our purpose of coming to his presence every now and then. So that his word will soak in our life. Amen. The Bible says, do not just be hearers of the word. For if you hear the word only and do not do what the word says, you are wasting your time. Yes, Tell your neighbor. Yes, wasting your time. Yes, and time is too, life is too short to be wasted. Life is too short. You will never know that life is short until you are in sick bed. Yes. And it's about time to surrender. Yes. Some people they forget about that and tell you that life is too short. They forget that there is limited time. We are only here for that. Why not work for eternity where you will not know never ending life? You don't have to go to the supermarkets. You don't have to go to do grocery. You don't have to learn that clothes. You don't have to do nothing. Everything in my father's house. Many mansions. There are many mansions. Hallelujah. Amen. In my father's house, Amen. there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you this. Yes, God is not a man that should lie. No. 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 
His word is yea and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So this morning, as we are going through this scripture, we have a lot of people. When this woman's life was going down, she was already given up. She had already given up. She had nowhere to go. Her husband has died. Her children are going to be taken in bondage. What is she going to do? She's down to nothing. She's down to nothing. And then God what? God was up to something for her. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God wanted that lady to see the manifestation of his power through his servant. Praise the living God. Amen. There are certain problems that are holding you. There are certain witches and wizards that are bewitching you. You know the reason why? God wants to manifest his power for them. Thank you. You don't get it. Hallelujah. Amen. That was for you. Let's now give the one for Jesus. Hallelujah. Equipped and empowered to do the work of ministry according to God's purpose for his life. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Madam uh, President, you want to say something about this? Okay. All right. Um, Sister Alex, before we do offer, you want to. Tell us what we are last week. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. There was no tight. Amen. Hallelujah. It is giving time. Blessing time. Hallelujah. Amen. God is about to bless us as we give unto his work. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give a hand of applause for my father. Hallelujah. Amen. You all give your time. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. This message that we received today is a wonderful message. Amen. I don't have to say much. The message for me, I know it goes directly to me. Amen. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes. What the president says today, sowing is very, very important. That's that's exactly what you know the pastor said just now. We have to sow. We have to sow. When we sow, we will see exactly what God is going to do for us in our life. So I will encourage each and every one of us. This year, 2012, is a very, very important year. <laughs> Your holy name for this offering. We leave the basket up to you this morning, dear Lord. And please have time today. We are still in the same one. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, Mary. Hallelujah. Sure. Hallelujah. Let's be on our feet. Let's be on our feet. And we stretch our hands to her. Hallelujah. We glorify you. We magnify your mighty name, Lord. We release your power upon this life right now. We expose their soul, spirit, and body into your blood. Father, let the blood fight on their behalf where there is a battle. In the name of Jesus, I declare this life to be the head and not the tail in every aspect of their life. In the name of Jesus, they will be above only and not beneath. In the mighty name of Jesus, I lose your power and your glory around them at all times. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, every weapon passion against them, I declare, shall not prosper in Jesus' name. I cancel every box of darkness over their life. I set them loose from every bondage in the name of Jesus. Father, I release them for power, for victory, and for glory. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Father. Happy Father.